Today we're going to look at uh, balanced conditions at ultimate limit states and what the definition of balanced really is. It's the upper uh, limit for an uh, area of steel and the highest moment resistance you could put on a section um, by code. So first of all, we, we need to know what the definition is of, of this term. We, we've got three, three diagrams here. We've got the uh, section diagram showing the geometry, the area of steel and the stress diagram, and then a strain di diagram here. And this is the key to understanding what balanced uh, conditions really means. And if we were to take the strain and the top fibers of the concrete, which is right here, and set it equal to its, uh, its ultimate strain, the, the strain at which failure would occur at, in compression, we know in the code it says that uh, the strain in compression at failure is 0.035 strains, and that's a dimensionless number. We also know that the strain in the steel at failure is 0.02. And when these two strains both approach failure, their respective failures, that is the definition of what balanced means. And uh, we always want to stay below that condition so that the, uh, the steel yields before the, the strain in the concrete reaches ultimate. Because if the strain in the concrete reaches ultimate before this strain, it would be a very abrupt failure. If the, if the strain uh, reaches capacity first, then you'll see yielding, because steel is a very ductile material. So that's why we always want to stay below the balanced uh, uh, condition. So let's uh, first look at what the uh, balance C over D ratio is, this C neutral axis depth to D. We could use similar triangles to solve it. So C, C over D. Oh, that's actually not, no. It, we, we would have to use similar triangles. So it'd be C is to 0 0.035 strains, right? 0 0.0035. What uh, this distance is, which is D minus C. D minus C is to this strain, 0 0.02. So that's just uh, similar triangles. So this comes up to be 0 0.002 C is equal to 0 0.0035 D minus 0 0.0035 C. So if we bring this over to the other side, this comes up to be 0 0.002 plus 0 0.0035, which is 0 0.0055 C, is equal to 0 0.0035 D. So C over D, which is balanced now, C over D balanced, is going to be uh, 0 0.0035 over 0 0.0055. And that will never change for any uh, section we deal with, so we don't have to rederive this ever again now. 0 0.0035 for 0 0.0055. And that comes up to be 0 0.636. So now we have the, uh, the location of the neutral axis for uh, balanced conditions. So we have the 495, the depth, so we can find out C balance now. Uh, C balanced would equal the depth 495 times this strain or times this C over D ratio, right? C times C C over D equals 0.635, so C balanced is equal to D, which is 495 for this problem times uh, 0 0.636. The 636 will never change; it's independent of the problem we're dealing with. So. 495 times 0.636. That comes out to be 315 millimeters. And we could also find the corresponding A value because we know 315 millimeters times uh, beta, which is um, point, uh, it's 0.9. Where is it? Yeah, beta one. Beta one is point nine. So three hundred fifteen times zero point nine. 
equals the A, 283 millimeters. So we know that this distance here, A, is 283. And we talked about the stress block in the previous tutorial. Saying, we said that it was alpha, alpha 1, phi C, F prime C. So we can determine the force in the steel and force in the concrete again. And uh, so the force in the steel is um, phi of the steel, area of steel, uh, F yield, area of the steel. Uh, and that's 0 0.85 times 400 MPa. We know it's 400 because that's at the strain of, of, of the, that is the yield strain at failure, 400 MPa. The yield strain of failure is 400 MPa. So we're setting it right on the verge of failure, 400 MPa, times the area of steel, which is an unknown. We're looking for area of steel balance now. But we also know the force in the concrete. And uh, it's going to be alpha 1 phi c f prime c times this 283 times the width of the section 300 which equals uh, alpha 1 is always going to be 0.8 phi of the steel is always 0 0.65 for our problem we're selecting 30 MPa concrete and then uh, 283 times 300. So that's going to be 0 0.8 times 0 0.65 times 30 times 283 times 300, which equals 1.32 times 10 to the 6. So the force in the concrete equals uh, 1.32 times 10 to the 6 but it has to equal the force in the steel so we can calculate what the area of steel balance is from that so the force in the steel has to equal this and there's there's the force in the steel right there 0 0.85 times 400 times AS balance so we take that force in the concrete 1.32 divided by 0.85 times 400 and we'll have the area of steel balance solved so 3,900 millimeters squared so the area of steel balanced is uh, 3,900 millimeters squared there you go that solves the problem now 3,900 millimeters squared and we can further, we can calculate what the moment resistance is at balance conditions now. We have the force, which is the, uh, the force either in the steel or concrete, they're both the same, times this lever arm. Uh, so the force is uh, already calculated. We take our pick, we'll say the, we'll take the, con this, the, um, the concrete, which was 1.32. Times 10 to the 6 newtons times the lever arm, which is the depth, this distance from here to here, minus this, which is a over this is a over 2 from here to here, depth minus a over 2, which is going to equal 1.32 times 10 to the 6 times 495 for the depth, right? Minus a. 283, this is at balance conditions, over 2. So the moment resistance balance is going to be uh, 1.32 e to the 6 times 495 minus 283 over 2 divided by 1000 squared to get the kilonewton meters. That's going to be 467 kilonewton meters.